This is module 35, fossil fuel resources. Um, so up here on the top um, in this figure, uh, make sure that you know the four different types of coal. Um, well, it's formation. So there's, there's th uh, two different types of coal here. Um, but this is the formation from peat, um, which is basically um, decayed plant and animal material um, accumulating on the bottom of this lake. And then um, lignite is compressed under some layers. Um, and then we have bituminous coal, um, which is uh, pretty much a sedimentary version of um, coal. And then anthracite, which is the best as far as the amount of energy you get um, per volume of rock. Um, so that would be kind of what we're looking for. But this is the order that they form. Um, so make sure you understand um, what they're named and the order of formation. Um, and then moving down, understand the process of coal formation along with the names, like I mentioned in the figure. Um, and then this is also the list of their grade order. So peat would be the lowest grade versus anthracite would be the highest grade. Um, and then know which countries have the largest reserves of coal. Um, so, and then also know which have the largest supplies of coal. And make sure you know the difference between those two questions. So reserves um, would be um, on hand, um, well not on hand, but reserves would be in the ground. Um, and then supplies are on hand. And so, um, so that does vary. So not countries that don't have the largest reserve don't necessarily have the largest supply. Um, and a lot of that has to do with mining. Um, for example, the U.S. has um, coal. We don't mine all of the coal, though. Um, so some of it is in reserves that we don't touch. Um, so just know which ones have the largest uh, reserve versus supply. Um, and then know the advantages and disadvantages of coal use. Um, a lot of this has to do with um, the, the advantages is that it's cheap and it's easy to get to. And it's pretty abundant um, for our fossil fuels. Um, disadvantages would be um, pollution. Um, definitely it's one of the biggest contributors of CO2 in the atmosphere. And then that kind of brings us over to this page, um, what toxins are released into the atmosphere by coal burning. Um, so it's a lot of CO2, but there's other toxins that are also released um, when it's burned. And then moving over to petroleum, um, so another fossil fuel that we use. Um, petroleum is cleaner, so um, but it's still it's um, a fossil fuel and still puts off lots of um, toxic emissions. So what do we use petroleum for? And why, um, you know, we do use it for gasoline. We use it for other things as well. Um, but why is it best suited for gasoline? Why do, why do we use that, um, you know, mainly for gasoline? We do um, use some petroleum for plastics and things like that, but a lot of it is gasoline. And why? Why does it make such a good fuel? Um, and then looking at this picture, um, there is a petroleum reserve um, and then a natural gas reserve, and it's found underneath the shale cap rock. Um, so that's an impermeable layer, uh, meaning that fluid can't move through. Um, so in a sense, it's trapped underneath that shale cap rock. Um, and natural gas will always um, generally be on top because it's less dense. Um, and it's a gas versus the liquid underneath. Um, so... Where is natural gas found in relation to petroleum? Well, it was kind of discussed um, in that figure, um, so it's always found above it. Um, and then I also bring up, again, what is an artesian well? Um, so that was from a previous chapter, and that kind of has to do with this petroleum and natural gas locked underneath the shale cap rock. Um, an artesian well was when we had water that was locked and trapped underneath the shale cap rock. Um, so both are under pressure. So that's why often when we um, strike oil, um, you'll see in the movies that it kind of sprays out, um, and that's because it's under pressure, and when we tap into that, it um, releases that pressure and it comes out. And that's the same with the artesian well with water. Um, so know the top producing um, petroleum countries. So who has the most petroleum, who produces the most, and make sure you know how to rank them in order of either least to greatest or vice versa. Um, and then the advantages and disadvantages of petroleum. Um, make sure you understand the difference between, um, you know, why it would be useful and why it isn't. Um, and then especially um, the environmental cost to collecting and extracting the oil. Um, so that could involve... Um, 
oil spills, which is brought up in this section. Um, we kind of talked about that with the deep water horizon. And then moving over to this side, um, we have ANWR. Um, so this is a highly debated um, resource of petroleum. And so that's found in Alaska. And um, the debatable part is it's found under um, some really natural, pristine land, um, wildlife habitat that is unique um, to that area. And so a lot of environmental issues are brought up with should we drill, um, should we get that petroleum, um, or should we leave it? And so there's a lot of debate on that. So uh, make sure you understand what that is and list any concerns that environmental scientists have for that. So um, this moves us over to the last um, of our fossil fuels, and that would be natural gas. And so um, what is the main gas compound of natural gas? Well, that's methane. Um, it's also composed of something else, so look that up. Um, and it's our cleanest burning fossil fuel. So yes, it's the cleanest, but it's still fossil fuel. And what do we use it for? So what do we use natural gas for? Um, you might have seen some of the buses around town um, advertise that they use natural gas, that they are clean emission. Um, in a sense, yes, they are compared to gasoline, but still it's not, um, it's not a renewable resource. Um, and then the advantages and disadvantages of natural gas. So why is it the cleanest fuel? And uh, make sure you know why. And then also, what are the advantages and disadvantages of natural gas? Why, why is it beneficial and not? Um, and then we brought this up in chapter one, uh, but understand what fracking is. So it starts on page one. It was the opening for chapter one. Um, so reread that. And remember, we talked about in the last section that natural gas use has surpassed coal use, um, and that has a lot to do with fracking. Um, so make sure you understand that. And then moving up to oil sands, this is something that we don't use um, that much. Um, it's a type of petroleum trapped in um, sand. Um, so how are they mined and processed? So read underneath the sticky note. Um, and why is it not a good source of energy? So why don't we use that? And then this last thing, um, liquid coal. Um, make sure you understand the environmental cost of liquid coal. Um, so why do we not use this um, very much? Um, and what are the implications to using it? And then this figure up here, um, this figure shows energy intensity, which is in the purple. Um, so um, so energy intensity is the energy um, use per gross domestic product. Um, so notice how that's declining. Um, so it's been declining since 1950s, um, but yet our energy use has gone up. So why is that? Um, why, even though we're using less energy um, and we're being more efficient, why is energy use going up? So think about maybe what your grandparents had um, as growing up. Did they have cell phones? Did they have electronics like we have always plugged in? Um, or was it much different? And so that is one of the main reasons why the per capita energy use has increased, but um, the energy use um, per dollar of the gross domestic product has declined. And then moving over to page 434. Um, looking at this graph, um, this is the Hubert curve, um, named after a man who um, developed it. And so what it's showing is the lower estimate of reserve, which is the blue, and the higher estimate of reserve, which is um, petroleum or, um, or you know, I guess it's, it could be petroleum, it could be coal, but we're talking about petroleum here. Um, so it's showing um, it, reserves are what's on hand. So it's got a high and a low. Um, we don't necessarily know exactly how much petroleum we have on hand or in reserves because it's hard to tell exactly what is in the ground. Um, but what this is showing is um, it peaks. So here in the middle, it's peaking um, as far as the oil production. And then it declines over time. And so it declines, um, one, because we have less of it. But also, it declines um, because we are finding alternate uses of energy. Um, and so a lot of environmental scientists, they, um, they think that we will 
find alternate uses before we run out of oil. So it's really not a concern. Um, if we weren't looking for other resources and weren't concerned about um, global climate change, then this might be more of an issue as far as knowing that we are past potentially our peak oil, meaning that we're past the point of um, having the most reserves on hand. But um, I think that we will probably find other alternate energy sources before we have to worry about running out. Um, and then down here it says, how is energy use different today than it was 50 years ago? Well, kind of mentioned that with um, your grandparents and energy use. Um, and then the last thing um, over here, um, fossil fuel use, it's finite, so we don't have an infinite amount. Um, so how long will it last? So at current rates, um, assuming that we don't increase our use um, and we don't decrease drastically, um, how long do we have? So think about um, the three fossil fuels, coal, natural gas, and petroleum. How much will, um, how long will each last? And that's module 35.